What's up, everyone? Aaron Negler here, PackersNews.com, live on Facebook late in the day on Thursday, coming to you live from New York City in front of a closet door. How are you? How is everyone today? The NFL schedule is set to be released later this evening, but we've got a good handle on what it looks like. Uh, make sure you head to PackersNews.com for all the latest on the schedule. Thad, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Jeff, hello. Um... Obviously, the opener, uh, we knew it was going to be prime time. It is prime time. It is against the Bears, which only makes sense. The NFL's oldest rivalry to uh, celebrate 100 years. Uh, what better way to commemorate that than uh, facing your oldest rival, which the Packers will do, um, kicking off their Sunday night football against the Bears in Lambeau Field. So from Virginia, how you doing, man? Wizzy, what up? Uh, and then... Coming on the heels of that, we've got uh, the Vikings coming in week two. So that's a bit of a one-two punch there coming out of the gate. Two division foes at home. Talk about putting the pressure on early. Um, obviously, not the Bears are going to be very... Uh, a lot of unscouted looks in that game uh, with a new head coach, new offense to face. Uh, Vic Fangio is still the defensive coordinator, uh, so th that remains similar, and obviously Fangio has ultra familiarity with Mike McCarthy after going against him for many years. Uh, but, you know, you flip it around and Mike Pettin uh, and Matt Nagy will, will not have a whole lot to go on as far as tendencies go. Nagy obviously will have a little bit more because of Pettin's time as a coordinator in the league. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how uh, that chess match un unfolds. Uh, and then, you know, you, you turn around and that next week you've got the Vikings coming in. Obviously, I think uh, Packer fans will be pretty amped up for that game, especially to greet Anthony Barr uh, in a game playing against Aaron Rodgers. Um, but, you know, the the one thing that kind of jumps out at you when you look at what we know about the schedule is the uh, bunch of home games early, three, I believe, in the first month, and then a bunch of home games late, uh, three in the month of December slash January, I think. And then, um, you know, in the middle, one home game every uh, those months in the middle. So there'll be a lot of traveling in the middle of the, of the, uh, of the schedule. How many primetime games do you think? Hello from Iowa. What's up, Darren? Um, I know there's three that we've confirmed. Uh, we've got uh, the Patriots on November 4th. There's a Monday night football game against the Raiders at Lambeau and the opener Sunday night football game against the Bears. So there's at least three. Um, they, it's possible they could have one more. Uh, the Packers looking to take Denver's number five? I doubt it. I know John Elway came out this afternoon and said that uh, he is open for business at five. I mean, it really depends. We've talked about it here a lot, what Brian Gutekunst has as far as you know, grades on some of these prospects and what his conviction is that said prospect that he would be hypothetically trading up for would be a game changer, would be transformational, that would be a franchise cornerstone. If he believes that that player is there and that he has the conviction that he wants to go get him, yeah, he's got the ammo to do it. There's no doubt about it. Of all the teams in this draft, he has more ammunition than anybody. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I tend to think he'll stay put at 14 because of the nature of this draft, the way it sets up. You have to think a lot of quarterbacks are going to go early. Um, a couple other offensive players, um, especially along the offensive line, could go early. And that could push talent down to the Packers on the defensive side of the ball. Um, it's no guarantee, obviously, but I tend to think that's what's going to happen. And I, uh, My hunch is that Gutekunst will view it that way. When is the bye week? Andrew, that is something we don't know yet. Um, uh, I'm definitely working on it. Make sure you keep checking PackersNews.com, but uh, that's something that we probably won't know until 8 p.m. Eastern tonight when the schedule gets released. Ah, very good question. Are draft picks overvalued now uh, because of the limited practice time? I saw that Ben Volen wrote something up about that um, in regards to a study that the Rams did. I want to read the study first. I want to get my hands on it, and I want to uh, kind of explore that idea a little bit more. It's intriguing, and I think there's definitely something there, uh, just because of the fact that now when rookies come into the league, <clears throat> to sum it up for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, uh, the study showed that rookies have the same amount of practice time after three years as they used to after one year under the old collective bargaining agreement. Thus, you know, meaning that draft picks are not as valuable now as they once were. And I think there's definitely something to that. 
Um, but I also think that that doesn't completely capture the value of a draft pick in the sense that you bring a guy into your program and teach him the ways of the NFL, the way you want it done. Um, you know, obviously you can go out in free agency, you can go and get a guy via trade and bring them into your program, but something that the Packers have valued the last 13 years uh, with Thompson is, um, you know, and McCarthy is training them in your way of doing things. And I think they put a premium on that. Now that said, you got to have talent, you got to produce, you know, and, um, yeah, like I said, I want to read the study a little bit more to get a better handle on it. But that at my initial, I did think there was something there. Definitely. I think, um, it's an interesting way of looking at it. I'm a little concerned about the offensive line moving forward. Uh, understandably, um, make sure you check out Michael Cohen's, uh, preview of the offensive line. It's going up, I believe, this afternoon, if it's not up already, at PackersNews.com. And he's also kind of looked at some options in the draft. I also did a video with Michael talking about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I completely understand because of the fact that you've got Brian Bulaga sitting there. Clearly, he's at, you know, off-season workouts. He is participating, but it's going to be a real long shot for him to be ready by week one. Um, so, you know, who's going to play right tackle? It has been a looming question all offseason, and it certainly hasn't been answered yet. Uh, at right guard, I think they're going to be okay. And I know they had a lot of guys in and out last year, but, it, uh, you know, I have said multiple times here, I think Justin McCray is ready to start. Um, Mike McCarthy kind of reiterated slash backed that up at the owners' meetings. Um, I think he's ready to take that next step. Obviously, you want a little bit more depth and right tackle is an issue. And I think that's something they're going to have to address during the draft because I can't imagine there's anyone sitting there, including Jason Spriggs, including Kyle Murphy, that you're going to feel comfortable playing for six weeks if indeed Brian Balaga ends up on the PUP, which I suspect he will. Travis, Brandon Marshall, yes, released by the Giants earlier this afternoon. I put it as a maybe. You know, anybody who follows me on Twitter always knows I say uh, maybe, doubt it, or no. I bet for each... I just kind of throw it out there initially because I get a hundred questions as soon as somebody comes free every single time. And I put a maybe because, you know, the idea that they were looking at uh, perimeter receivers and free agency early would tell you that, you know, after cutting Nelson um, or while cutting Nelson, you know, I, there's certainly a open spot there opposite Devonte Adams and they could probably get Brandon Marshall very cheap. And he's probably would love one more shot at trying to go get a ring. Um, you know, I think he, he has some semblance of knowledge of the offense now, having worked with McAdoo for a year, and who's clearly rooted in McCarthy's system now. Obviously, McCarthy's kind of changing things up this year. but um, So I think it's a possibility. It's something they may think about. I have no idea if they'll make a call or not, but that's somebody that they could look at as a bargain to bring in big body on the perimeter, um, to run opposite Adams, you know, do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. In fact, I think there's a good possibility that Brandon Marshall retires, but uh, you can't dismiss it out of hand. Uh, how about Dez? Uh, like I've been saying, I think it's a possibility. It's been all quiet on that front. I know he jokingly said there's too much history there when asked about the Packers, but you know, we'll see. I highly doubt either of those things happen. I, you know, I tend to think they'll look at the draft and trying to get better that way. Oh, hey, what's up? Color correction. Davenport at 14, or will he have to jump up? I don't think he'll have to jump up. I think Davenport's the talent. I've said many times here, I think I'll be surprised if he's taken at 14, if the Packers take him at 14. Um, a lot of upside there, but he's incredibly raw. Why won't they have a Bears-Packers game at noon in Green Bay? Yeah, it's been a long time, right? It's been a long time. Um, they've been on prime time games. I think the last, and even when it was, the last one that even wasn't a prime time was a four o'clock or three o'clock in Green Bay. Um, yeah, it's been a while. I don't know. Uh, Landry at 14, trade back into around, around 25, 26, take Isaiah Oliver. That's all possible. Um, what was the, the office? Anything is possible. It's all possible. Who is their number one DB as of today? Defensive back? Um, uh, I'll go with uh, probably Tremont Williams. And I know Kevin King will be opposite him. 
I don't think they'll travel, so they don't really truly have a number one. I think they'll play sides most likely. Um, although, you know, Petten's matched up before, so you can't really say until they get, they get on the field. But I think those are going to be your perimeter guys. To me, the bigger question is who's going to be playing in the slot. You know, you can't throw Devon House in there. Is it going to be Quentin Rollins? Yikes. You know, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think that, that answer is probably in the draft. Davenport all hype. Alex, I agree that his rise to prominence in media circles is definitely due to hype. I mean, that's a kid who wasn't making, you didn't hear a whole lot about during the college football season. And then all of a sudden, you know, the senior bowl arrives and all you do is see his name everywhere. So I definitely think there's been a bit of a, you know, PR campaign on his behalf. But I do think he can play and I do think he'll be a good player in the NFL. Um, so I don't know about all hype, but he's definitely rocketed up the consciousness of the general public. When do they play the Patriots? Uh, Sunday night game on November 4th, I believe it was. Hold on, I've got it right here. Um, yeah, November 4th, Sunday night football in Foxborough. Ward in the slide. Well, Alex, he's a possibility. Yeah, if he falls to them, we'll see. Do you ever go to away games? I go to all of the games. I go to each and every game. Can we land Des Bryant, Chris? Yes, they can. Will they? I doubt it. Primetime games kick off at 1 a.m. in the UK. Yeah, they're just testing your diehardness, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we know which defensive scheme we are running next year yet? Oh, Mike. I mean, Mike Patton's not about to lay it out for you. Uh, but traditionally, he has, he's based in 3-4 principles. You can look back at a lot of the different things he's run, both uh, in... New York as Jets coordinator or in uh, Buffalo as the coordinator there. You know, one of the one of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the reasons Tremont Williams is brought in is to help teach uh, the system. Uh, he played in it in Cleveland under Pettin. Um, but it's rooted in 3-4 principles. It comes out of the Buddy Ryan system. Um, they're not afraid to use a four-man front if they think their personnel calls for it and or uh, it's, you know, there's a good uh, matchup uh, for their opponent. And that's something that's going to be a little different under Pettin than, you know, something that Capers rarely did is he's going to mold his defense much more so week by week. Um, kind of what the Patriots do on offense. Uh, that's how Pettin likes to roll on defense. He will be malleable and be very kind of, uh, you know, shifting to try and uh, take advantage of weaknesses uh, that he sees in the opponent each and every week. Will Rupkowski get more carries like he did two seasons ago or uh, or not? Um, I tend to doubt it. I think they've got a lot of talent in the backfield there. I think his getting carries two years ago was much more about the fact that they were really banged up at running back. Um, you know, maybe if they get down injury-wise again and they have to turn somewhere. Uh, but I tend to doubt it. Who's the dork that keeps bringing up Raji? We've got a Raji mention. Did Bro ever have that visit with Green Bay? I don't think so. I never, uh, I never heard of one. I asked repeatedly. I don't think he ever came in. Um, I, I don't know what that's about because I, as near as I can tell, I don't think he ever visited with the Niners either, and that was another team he was supposed to be visiting with. So maybe something happened there. Anthony Miller in the third. Yes, please. Uh, Steve, it's a possibility. Uh, he'd be. I think he'd be. Um, I think he'd be a good Packer. Draft two DBs in the first three rounds? Definitely can't dismiss the idea. Um, obviously, Ron Wolf set the precedent back there uh, all those years ago when Randy Moss torched them, and then Wolf turned around and took three defensive backs in a row. I don't think Goody Kunst is going to go down that road, but um, would it surprise me if they took, say, two corners or a corner and a safety? Uh, those you know two out of the first three picks? Not at all. Raji in the second round. Now you're talking. Thursday Night Football, who do we play? We don't know yet, Rye. As far as I know, anyway. Um, sorry, I'm getting a text. Oh, Amon Green pled guilty in his child abuse case. Upsetting news about a former Packer there for you. Trade up in the second round. Uh, it's possible. Um, I, someone posited earlier that they would possibly trade up into the bottom of the first. I think that's also possible. I think it really depends on who the target is and you know the dance partner involved. Uh, they're at the bottom of the first slash top of the second. 
I would be surprised, though, if they did trade up for a corner just because of the fact that this class is so deep at corner. I think they're going to be able to find the talent if they just, you know, stick to their guns, so to speak. But you never know. Bear Sunday night. That's right, Christopher. Um, do they re-sign Brett Good, Matt? I tend to think if they come out of draft weekend, I don't think they're going to draft one, but if they come out of the undrafted free agent period without one they like, then yeah, probably. But I think they'll wait until they see how the draft shakes out. Is Herb Waters healthy? As far as I know, yes. Uh, that's one of the things I'm very interested to see um, when we give a little more availability during OTAs to see um, how he looks. Mason Rudolph in the second. That would be interesting. I doubt that happens, but you never know. Ooh, Michael, that's a Sophie's choice. Minka or Derwin, if I had the choice. I'd probably take Fitzpatrick. Um, I, I like James. I think he's going to be a really good player, but I, I love Fitzpatrick. I love his tape. <laughs> Nagler, why haven't the Packers given you a call? Because they're smart. Jake, Vita Vey, I said a long time ago, two months ago, I think, um, that if he's available there at 14, they have to at least consider him. Even though they signed Muhammad Wilkerson, doesn't matter. That's a one-year signing. Your job as general manager is to get the best talent available uh, for the long haul. And if Vey is the highest rated player on their board when they're on the clock, they absolutely have to think about taking him. Now, I don't think, you know, that will, even if he is the highest rated player on their board, I think there's a chance they reach for need, maybe, or not reach, but they go for need instead. Um, like, like they famously did when they drafted Mr. BJ Raji over Michael Crabtree, who was the highest rated player on their board that year. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, I'll keep saying it. I think they absolutely have to consider Vey. Um, he's a really good player who could you know, cause a lot of havoc up front, and you win in this league by dominating the line of scrimmage. And he would certainly fit and help in that equation. When does the preseason schedule come out? It came out, John. Oh, I'm talk I guess you're talking about times and dates. Uh, we'll probably get that in the next couple weeks. Isaiah Oliver in the second round. Christopher, we've talked about him here before quite a little bit. Love him for the Packers. Love him for Petten's scheme. I love him as a press man corner. He struggles in zone a little bit when his, uh, you know, with his drops. But I think for the most part, he's a guy who loves to get his hands on the wide receiver, be disruptive at the line of scrimmage. I, I think he'd fit right in. Uh, is, uh, did John Brown ever get signed? Chase, yes. he. Um, I believe he went to Baltimore. I think he's with the Ravens. Color Rush is gone. Uh, yes and no. Um, it's gone from Thursday Night Football. They may still incorporate it somehow. That's what the NFL told me. Um, but, there, uh, as many of you probably know from Devontae Adams' Instagram, sure looks like there will be a third alternate you know, yellow jersey this year. Most likely in the first defensive back or edge. Oh, I guess it really depends on who's available. You know, if if there's a say Fitzpatrick falls to them, uh, and Ward or or James falls to them, and then but also Harold Landry is sitting there, I would probably go defensive back. But if those guys are all gone and Landry's sitting there, but some lesser cornerback is on the board, I'd probably go with Landry. So yeah, it's hard to say. Do you think Trevor Davis will be our number one kick punt returner? Ask me again after the draft. That's a very uh, tenuous hold he has on a roster spot. Sign DRC before the draft? It's possible, but I, you know, I think it'd be interesting to see if they made that move because then they'd have a lot of, not a lot of, but a bunch of veteran talent there. And if they ended up drafting someone, um, where do those reps go? You know, who gets those reps? So in practice and in camp. So I would be surprised if they made that move prior to the draft. <laughs> Mike, that's a great question. Alexa, who should the Packers draft next week? Hmm, I don't know that. She doesn't know, Mike. Uh, are the Packers going to get rid of the ugly navy blue throwbacks with the gumball helmets? Yes. <laughs> For what it's worth, Trevor Davis made the news in New Zealand. Woo, nice. Uh, Landry at 14 is a gift from God? Possibly. 
We'll see. It would be nice if one of those two linebackers fell. Neil, I imagine you're talking about Roquan Smith and Tremaine Edmonds, and I agree. If either of those guys fell, I think both of them, either one of them, would probably be the pick over most likely most of the defensive backs. I mean, I can't say, but I think both of those guys are going to be game changers. Ronda Rousey, edge rusher. Now we're off the rails, and it's time for me to go. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question. Uh, really nice of you guys to drop by, as always. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest on the schedule. Uh, like I said, Michael Cohen has a great look at the offensive line and some prospects that the Packers could look at in the draft. Um, it's kind of the midpoint of our uh, 10-part series on the draft leading up to the next Thursday night, so make sure you check that out. Everything at PackersNews.com. We've got it all covered for you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Barring any breaking news overnight, um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks a lot.